So in this video, we are solving equations with polynomials. And what you're going to do first is set it equal to zero and then do exactly the same steps we did to find the zeros in the previous video. So our goal here is to take this degree four and turn it down to a degree two to some sort of x squared that we have. And then we're going to use that to find the last two. So the first thing you want to do is to plug this in your calculator. So I've inputted the left side in. We don't have to put equal zero. And we're just going to hit zoom six to graph this, put it in a nice standard window. And there we go. So it looks like negative two is a zero and then a nice irrational. So if we hit trace, negative two, if it comes out zero, it's a zero. Now there's more to it than just that. If you look at it, anytime you see like bends going on here, then there's usually multiplicity going on. So if negative two is a zero, it might be a zero twice, meaning it has an x plus two squared going on. So what we're going to do is say, okay, one of our zeros is x equals negative two, and we're gonna use synthetic on it. So this is one, four, negative one, negative 20, and negative 20. And it's going to be zero at the end because we know our remainder theorem. That'd be one, negative two, that's two. That's negative four, so negative five. That would be 10, so negative 10. And together that makes 20, and there we go. So it's a zero. So looking at the calculator though, anytime you see bending going on here, we think it's a degree three, but if we really zoom in, what, what's happening is it's coming through, coming back up and hitting in a parabolic shape here. So it actually does have multiplicity of two. But the way you can tell it is you don't have to even look at it and think that. You just try it twice. So if it has multiplicity of two, then it'll work twice because it's a zero twice. So this is one, negative two, zero. That's zero, negative five, and that's 10, see, zero. So if you see those bends going on in a graph, you see this situation happening, you know it has some sort of multiplicity of an even number. So you can try it twice, and we needed it twice to get it down to a nice quadratic. And so now translating this, this is x squared minus five. So now what we have done is taken that x to the fourth and made it into an x plus two and an x plus two, and then finally into an x squared minus five equals zero. We used the remainder theorem because if negative two gives us a zero, that means it's a zero, so that x plus two is a factor and x plus two is a factor. So we already know that x is equal to a negative two and negative two, we just have to solve the last one. So if we solve that, we get x equals plus or minus rad five. So we know that x is equal to negative two, you don't wanna write it twice, negative radical five and positive radical five. And to check this in our calculator, we're just gonna check the radical five, which would be right here or here. So we go second calc, and you can use zero, or you can just hit trace and then radical five. And it should come out to say zero, which it does. So we know radical five is a zero, and you can even check the other one, trace negative second radical five, hit enter, and it also says it's a zero. So we know those are correct. And those are your solutions. So even though we had a degree four, we only have three because we had a multiplicity of two. But it's the same thing. If this had said find the zeros of this polynomial, right, and we had p of x equals x to the fourth plus 4x cubed minus x squared minus 20x minus 20, it would say find the zeros. Or now you have an equation that says solve. It's the same exact step. So you'll use find two zeros to break it down to a degree four and then solve that last one. Okay, so we're gonna do this one again, but this time without factoring. So again, we set it equal to zero, and you could do x squared minus four and x squared plus four, but we're gonna do it without factoring using our calculator. So we plug that in, clear that one out, x to the power of four minus 16, zoom zero, And there it is. We're gonna actually hit zoom six on this one to get it back down to standard so I can get those two numbers. 
and there we go. So it looks like negative two and two. Let's just trace it. Trace two, it says yes. Trace negative two, it says yes. So there we go, we have two zeros. And why do I need two? Because I need to get this four down to a quadratic, which means I'm going to be using synthetic twice. So we're gonna do it once with two and then with negative two. Now this one's missing a lot, so we've gotta fill it in. Okay. Remember, if it's a degree four, there's going to be five numbers in there. One, zero, 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 negative 16. And we already know that two is a zero, so everything should work out perfectly fine and give us a zero. So that's one, it's two, it's four, it's eight, and that's 16. Works out perfect. And then we try it again, but we know it's going to work with negative two. Those were the two zeros that we had. So we know that two and negative two were solutions to the equation already. So using synthetic on them, we'll break this down to our quadratic. And there we are, see, zero. So we're left with x squared plus four equals zero. And if we solve that using square root property, that's 2i. And so that's why they're not showing up on the graph, because they're imaginary. So only the real solutions will cross here. And this is one of the reasons we need to be able to do this by hand. So we know our, our x is equal to 2, negative 2, negative 2i. It just bothers me to have those backwards. So I'm going to switch them. Negative 2 and 2, negative 2i and 2i. Those are our four solutions. So if I were to plug in negative 2, power of 4, I get 16, 2 to the power of 4 is 16, negative 2i to the power of 4 is 16, and 2i to the power of 4 is 16. And that is how you do it. So it's the same as finding zeros. If it's a degree 4, you've got to use it twice to get it down. If it was a degree 3, you only need one zero, but you're always getting down to that quadratic. Once you get to the quadratic, you can use the quadratic formula or factoring or the square root property to solve it. Thank you.